Hello. In the last video, we wrote this method that reads from text files. And what it does is it returns all the content from the text, um, each word with a space in between it, as one long string. You can, you can modify this to suit your needs, and I can't stress this enough. It's not about taking the code I've written and copying it. It's about using it and modifying it to suit your needs. So let's imagine that I wanted to, I wanted to return um, the information in an array. So we're going to write a method, and what this method is going to do is it's going to generate an array, and it's going to copy each word into a new element in the array. So let's write our method header. This method will take a string parameter representing the name of the string, the name of the file, pardon me. It will copy the content into an array of strings. And of course, if you know, for example, that the, that the file is going to contain all numbers, you could copy into an array of integers. Do all sorts of things. Now I'm going to preface this with, I would probably use an array list to do this. And the reason why is an array list, you don't have to know the size in advance. However, that being said, my students that I hope are watching this, we haven't talked about array lists formally yet, so we're going to, we're going to go with arrays to start. So the, par the parameter is going to be a string, and it's going to be called file, and the return type is going to be an array of strings. So public static string, there's our return type. Let's say read array. We're going to say string file. And to set this up really quickly, again, we're going to use a try catch structure. So I'm going to try catch file not found exception. It's going to tell me that no one's throwing that, so why are you doing it? Scanner s1 equals new scanner file f. Oh, new file. Okay. Now this is going to be a little funny, and the reason why is because, oh, got it. Because I don't want to get into too much of the funny details of working with one scanner object. I'm actually going to create two scanner objects, and this is why. This is going to be a two-step process. Step one is we're going to count how many elements are in the file. So basically, we're going to count how many lines there are. And step two is then we're going to create the array and copy the elements in. I'm going to make an assumption here. I'm going to assume that there is one line, one word per line. Okay. Again, you can change the assumptions based on what you're doing. You might have to tweak your code a little bit. So again, step one, we're going to count how many elements are in the file. So basically, we need to count. We can say that as count how many lines. And then we're going to create the array and copy the elements in. The reason why we have to do this is because we have to know how big an array is before we create it. Sorry, before we use it. So this first scanner object is going to be used to count the size of the file. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up here, I'm going to make an int. I'm going to call it CTR. I'm going to set it to 0. And then I'm going to say, while s1 dot has next line, I'm going to say ctr is equal to ctr plus 1. All I'm doing is counting the lines. Now I'm going to make, I'm going to make an array of strings, and I'm going to give it, I'm going to make it the size of ctr. So this is step one. We're counting how many lines the file has. And then if each line contains one word, I'm then going to create an array of that size. Now I'm going to make another, I'm going to make another scanner object. And I'm going to say while s2 dot has next line. So oh sorry, I'm not going to use a while this time because I know how many lines there are. I'm going to say 4 int i equals 0, i is less than ctr, i is equal to i plus 1. So I'm going to use a, a counted loop now because I know how many lines there are and I'm going to go through each line 
and I'm going to say words at i is equal to s2 dot next and then I'm going to return words so what I can do is again two steps I go through and count how many lines there are in the file and then I create an array of that size and then I go back to the file but this time I copy the elements into the array again this method is completely based on the fact that I know what the information in the file looks like and I've planned for it. Now, you'll notice here I get an error in this method and the reason why is because if my return statement is here, that means there's a possibility it might not reach it. So I have to come down to the bottom and I'm gonna return null, meaning that I'm just gonna return a null pointer, which is fine. All right, so let's see how this works. So let's make an array of strings called words equals, and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to initialize it to any size. I'm actually just going to invoke the method read array. So let's go read array, and I'm going to pass it in.txt. And now let's just quick little piece of code to print it in the array. Remember when you're In this you want to you want to use the built-in method to calculate the length. So we look at in.txt, it has one, two, three, four, and again, like I said, the assumption is that each of these are one per line. Let's add another one, five. We'll save that, come back to here. Let's comment out these first two lines. Ah, we have a problem. What is our problem? It looks like we're in some sort of infinite loop somewhere. So let's take a look. So this is a, a common error, and actually it slipped by me, but let me show you exactly where it is. It's right here. I'm checking if S1 has next line, but I never move it to the next line. So I have to do S1.next in here. Because basically we're stuck in this infinite loop because we're saying, does it have a next line? Yep, it does. Does it have a next line? Yep, it does. But we never actually move to the following line. So now, if all goes to plan, it should work. So let's run this now. And there you go. There's our array, one, two, three, four, five. If I go to my in.txt, and I had a six, and I save this, and I run this, one, two, three, four, five, six. So then let's go back to reading files. I'll add a little, little pointer here that doesn't have to do with files, but if I really want to quickly print out an array, it turns out there's this great class called the arrays class, and there's a static method called toString, and all I have to do is pass it the array. I'll have to import arrays. And this is a really nice quick way to print out arrays just to check to see if it works. And there it is down below. I hope this video helped. And again, play around with this. Take my code and then make it your own. And then once you can read and write the files, you're going to be having lots more fun. Have a good day.